concerns. Yep, so that's the third crime. Sorry, what's the, what's the, the first one is the 9th and the 7th is the yep. first court order. What's the second one? Oh, sorry, the second is that one, sorry. Yep. So the second one is? Is that she refused to, she did not provide court orders. Uh, she knew that I was putting all over the internet uh, what, what she had done to me. So she failed to supply a court order? That's correct. On that date as well, or is that a between dates? Uh, it was after that date. Okay, yep. And it, that court order, uh, she didn't raise for a period of 12 months. You already are aware that the Chief Federal Magistrate, when I wrote to him, um, ignored that the Federal Attorney General directed me to his office and stated uh, that it's not up to him to deal with these matters and um, ignored me and threatened me with the gag legislation 121 um, and I did take it as a threat when he refused to uh, do his job which was his first and principal job of a federal magistrate is to ensure everyone receives court orders on a timely basis. Yep. So that's why he's there to ensure that everyone receives natural justice. And he failed his oath of office and he failed, um, and also he assisted the federal magistrate uh, with her committing her crimes of, of criminal coercion. Yeah, it's, um, you can draw those analogies from it. I'm sure a legally minded person may shoot that analogy down with something else. But it's an analogy. What I'm saying is, there's the first two. What's the third one? The third one is... What's the third one? Um, the third one. Sorry. Uh, the third was uh, the magistrate. I do have proof that I, I did a lawful um, um, arrest, citizen's arrest, and that she obstructed and she failed to present herself and she failed to issue. Uh, where I don't have the evidence is uh, that I did, uh, that the... Um, um, so the third offence is that she failed to present herself to a police station? Yes, she, she resisted arrest. So on that day when you made the arrest, she stayed in the, she stayed in her, her bar and kept going, or did she get up and walk out of the court? No, no. She said, if I um, if I agree to sitting down for now, uh, that she will provide a copy of transcripts, and um, no, she ref uh, she never provided a copy of transcripts, and everything that was stated in that court, uh, including giving me. Do you remember what date that was? That, that would be a specific date. I, I can give it to you. I just yeah. don't have it with don't me it. now. Because that there may be coming at the well. Yeah. 19th of the 7th, is that, that's not the same date that you may be arrested, though, is it? I think it was. I think it was actually. Uh, I'll, I'll find out for okay. sure. I'll that's because that, obviously that's the date of that offence. Yes. And so, um, Irrespective. So, she agreed, so you're saying your recollection of the, and I have to say your recollection because yep. we've got no re transcript or anything here, your recollection of the day when you arrested her, uh -huh. my understanding of, from previous conversations is prior to you standing up and arresting her, yep. she had failed to let you present witnesses uh -huh. and present affidavits that you'd prepared that, contra that contradicted and, in your view, nullified uh -huh. or, or certainly contradicted the affidavit of the other party at that, mm -hmm. at that. Yep. Also, um, uh, in relation to so her she, saying the word cunt in the courtroom. Yep, before we get to that one, yep. so she asked you to sit down and she'd provide a transcript of what, of that day? Yes, she said that she would provide a copy so that I could take it uh, to whoever I, I so wished. Okay, so you've agreed to sit down on the proviso that no. you'd still make the arrest? I, I only I only agreed once uh, it, it, I I actually uh, was being stopped from the um, carrying out that arrest by the um, children's lawyer. Um, I told him that he was obstructing. I told him to sit down, and um, 
then the magistrate said, I think we should give Mr. Astor some more time uh, with his daughter. And this is after the psychiatrist uh, that I had seen had threatened me, and then I knew what it was like. That's chalk. Chalk. So this is all in one day. So yeah. the reality of it is, that, and I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be smart. I, I, I saw chalk in his office in a state building. I saw him. Yeah, but when, when you saw him, when was that? Prior to this day. Though. Prior to this day. Just what I'm saying before. though is, to investigate it, call me silly, but part of our process of taking an oath, investigating a crime, is to establish a better than strong case, yep. because no one wants to go to court to lose. Yep. To establish this, that particular day, mm -hmm. the transcript from the court on that one particular day, is instantly either going to validate that your recollection of that day? Yes, that's correct. Or, if it's completely different to that, is going to paint you uh -huh. in a picture of potentially... Bad light. A, a bad light mm. and potentially... Vexatious. Very vexatious. Well, extremely vexatious. Yep. yep. I also... I was so scared because she didn't give me the recording yep. that I knew that I, the only way that I was going to get some evidence Yep. was to call that children's lawyer and so I have him making the admission yep. that I did arrest Pedro So the children's lawyer is that... Um, uh, Mike Emerson. Mike Emerson. Yes. Yep. Everyone else was in, in the court as well. So, so is the next case is normally sitting in the back of the court too. I've, I've never walked into a family law. No, court. yes. Um, the actual back of the court was absolutely full of people and they were absolutely shocked as to what was going on and as in you could actually physically hear um, that the awe uh, of shock as to what I was doing in that court. Okay, were you legally represented at the time? No, my barrister had been kicked out and illegally kicked out. For Magistrate DMAC to kick out a barrister or a lawyer Okay. Then she when, has to when, get when was he kicked out that day? No, on the third day of the first trial. And for her to, to kick him out, uh, she had to um, charge him with contempt. There were no contempt charges. He did nothing wrong. In what, what? What's his name? Ha Harold James Johnson. Is he still practicing? I don't think so, because he's got so scared. Harold James. James Johnson. <coughs> Do you know where he is? He's in Victoria. He got threatened by the... Uh, this is uh, him telling me, but he told me that uh, he was threatened uh, by the children's lawyer. Uh, that. Um, that if he continued with the appeal, that he was going to put him in jail, and that um, uh, he will ensure that this doesn't uh, go to appeal, and that it will be back in federal magistrate DMAC's hands, and that uh, he will go to jail if he continues. Uh, and th that was um, the reason for an appeal, is because you're appealing decisions, yep. and so he was appealing the decisions on him by the magistrate. So, and this, the, the, so this third day of the first trial, yep. you remember that's not 2010, that's back 2008 or 9, wasn't it? Alright. I wish to complete my action of arresting Federal Magistrate DMAC and I require your assistance. I require uh, you to fulfil your oath now. Under the contract I have with you, under common law, now you have the evidence of crime, uh, that you treat myself as a victim of crime, and that you do carry out an investigation into what I have alleged as being criminal uh, crimes committed against myself and my daughter. That you protect me and my daughter from any more wrongdoing from the court. 
that as a matter um, is massive and is a complex, com uh, complex case which involves persons who are judicial understanding of the law and have the intent to cause uh, serious harm to myself and my daughter still maintain a job where they may continue to cause harm to other persons. I'm requesting you to carry out your oath of uh, your duty of oath uh, to attend with me in the Federal Magistrate's Court while I'll continue and make the arrest of the magistrate and placing her in your custody in order for you to be able to question the magistrate in relation to the criminal indictment. And if she refuses to speak uh, to you with a lawyer present to indict her uh, to take over this investigation and to continue uh, the investigation where I'm now scared that the recordings will go missing or be tampered with and I have no remedy to protect evidence from going missing. You have that right to gain that evidence as being a police officer. After arresting Federal Magistrate DMAC, I wish to arrest persons within uh, the court uh, whom ignored that the Federal Magistrate did commit crimes and keep silent of those crimes and uh, following showing you evidence where the mother and the mother's lawyer did assist making false declarations. These persons will be aware also of the Federal Magistrate did state the words that are inexcusable when their oath states that they have to be unbiased. The, these courts, if they remove 88% uh, of men from having equal time shared parenting, then these magistrates are not performing their duties where the law had the intent to have equal parenting rights. Their, their oaths do confirm that they must be biased. Uh, that, that they must be unbiased. Those stats show a different story. I wish uh, this to be a joint investigation between myself and the police, uh, as you have done previously involving citizens uh, for carrying out investigations of a large scale. I have approximately 16 boxes of evidence. If you criminally indict the federal magistrate for these crimes, then we have both a police side and a private prosecutor's side, both confirming criminal intent on different aspects of, of the crimes um, uh, between the two of us. And I'm hoping that the magistrate will, will, will bring both uh, cases together. That understanding the circumstances that I have, uh, that I provide you a power of attorney, so that you can make application to the courts for a mention within my case, and that way there is no gag legislation that you um, that you're lawfully acting on my behalf, and to assist me with reducing the level of harm. If she is not in the country, as in my daughter, then you control all of the indictments and I will place myself in my care of my family. Okay. Well, my thing to that is, I don't know if I can or can't, but well, to be honest, and that's what I'm saying, I'll put a report up to my bosses, but yeah. I can tell you now, I'm certainly, lawfully, I don't know if I can hop in a car with you or put you in a police car and take you to the federal law court to arrest her. My first question on that is, you've commenced a private... Prosecution. On what charges are these? The three charges that you've identified. Oh here? no! Oh, I've so got... you've, you've you've indicted on a different on different charges. There's 46 charges. Okay, so you've indicted on those. These three charges that we've you've gone through here today. Yes. These would be fresh charges. These are fresh charges, and these are ones that I could okay. not. So if, if we don't call them charges, how about we say this is a fresh complaint? Fresh complaint. I am prepared to put that through as a report yep. because they're now obviously legal operation or advice is going to have to give a comment as to whether it's lawful or not lawful. Yep. By putting it through to us, it's not a matter of police coming along and watching you do a citizen's arrest. It wouldn't, to me, that's not the way that I see No, it. but you, if you were taking it over completely, uh, or that you were actually doing these, what, what it is, is if I have someone who is arresting, uh, uh, resisting arrest, 
perhaps it's not you, but I do wish for a police officer to attend 